One man is dead after a crash this morning involving four vehicles on Tate's Creek Road. We'll have more on that coming up. The anniversary of a double murder has a family upping the reward to $50,000. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Amber Philpot reporting. A deadly crash shut down a busy Lexington road. It happened during rush hour this morning. The Fayette County coroner has identified the victim as 19 year old Daniel Ethan Stamper. WKYT's Hillary Thornton has more now from the scene. It's our top story at 430. A man who lives nearby the crash site here on Tate's Creek Road says he could hear the impact from inside his home. That man says drivers speed down this stretch of Tate's Creek Road, and unfortunately, investigators say they believe that is exactly what caused this deadly crash. Tate's Creek Road between Laredo Drive and Armstrong Mill was closed down for several hours after the crash happened just before 7 this morning. Officials say a Mitsubishi was traveling at a high rate of speed outbound when the driver swerved to miss a pickup. Up, turning inbound on to Tate's Creek. Investigators say that is when the Mitsubishi then clipped a Mercedes before being T-boned by a Chrysler that was also headed inbound. The Fayette County coroner says the passenger of that Mitsubishi 19-year-old Daniel Ethan Stamper died in the crash. Officials say he was not wearing a seatbelt on what was his morning commute into work. Uh, traveling to work, looked to be um, you know a pretty hard worker. It appears that he uh, died from just a blunt impact. Uh, there's not that much as far as external injuries to him, so obviously there must be uh, quite a bit of internal, and there was uh, a pretty good void in the Mitsubishi car. We spoke with Stamper's employer, a local contracting company. They say the man driving is also one of their employees, so obviously a sad situation for that family and company today. Now at this point, investigators say speed seems to be the only factor in this morning's crash with no signs that drugs or alcohol were involved. In Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. And right now, we do not know the conditions of the two people taken to the hospital. A grand jury has handed down indictments against nine people for the thefts of bourbon from two Kentucky distilleries. We've been tracking one of the thefts involving Pappy Van Winkle bourbon since October of 2013. The grand jury says that between January of 2008 and this month, the defendants were members of a criminal syndicate that promoted or stole property from Buffalo Trace and Wild Turkey. They also said the defendants were illegally trafficking anabolic steroids as well as the material from those two distilleries. We'll have more on the people charged coming up on WKYT News at 5 o'clock. This week marks one year since a central Kentucky mother and daughter were found dead in their home. And now a $50,000 reward is being offered for information leading to an arrest in the double murder of Kathy and Samantha Netherland. WKYT's Victor Puente is at the state police post in Elizabethtown, where today, for the first time, we heard from the woman who lost her mother and sister in that terrible crime. The reward for information in the murders of Kathy and Samantha Netherland was $2,500. But with a year passing and no new information, their family has raised it to $50,000. We have done this in hopes of finding answers. If you know something, I am begging you to please come forward. Please give us closure. Holly Netherland spoke to the media today at the state police post in Elizabethtown about the loss of her sister, Samantha. The person who sat next to me and helped me beat the bosses of every video game I ever played was gone. And her mother, Kathy. My hero when I was little, the woman who gave up so much for me, was gone. The two were found murdered in their Bardstown home last year. Kentucky State Police say they've received thousands of tips, but so far their killer is still free. Police have released a description of a vehicle they're looking for, a black Chevy Impala with no spoiler or chrome strip and a small antenna mounted above the center of the rear windshield. This evening, the Netherland family is holding a memorial balloon release. That'll be at 7 o'clock in Bardstown at Parkway Baptist Church. In Hardin County, Victor Puente, WKYT. A Facebook page has been set up for tips. You can find it by going to facebook.com slash find that car. Lexington police are asking for the public's help in solving the murder of 22-year-old Salahuddin Jitmood. Police say the pizza delivery driver was stabbed to death Sunday night at an apartment on Trent Circle. They are not sure if he was targeted or if the deadly attack was random. 
If you are a Kentucky Utilities customer, expect your monthly bill to go up as far as electric. KU has reached a settlement on their request for a rate increase. The average KU customer's bill will go up about $9 a month. KU will get an extra $125 million in revenue with that rate increase. The PSE must still approve the settlement. We're staying mainly dry in the bluegrass this afternoon, but more rain could come later tonight. And the cooler temperatures are going to be sticking around. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. And it's almost a March wind that is blowing out there across central and eastern Kentucky as well today, guys. Those gusts close to 40 miles per hour a little earlier. Let's check on some of the winds as of now. Uh, topping out around 30 miles per hour into much of central and eastern Kentucky. Louisville, the top dog at 37 miles per hour with that gust. Now, if you're out this evening, winds will come down a little bit. Still, though, chance for a shower and those chilly temperatures into the 50s. Right, close, uh, right around 11 o'clock, we're very close to 50 degrees. Live first alert defense. As of now, tracking some of those on and off showers that, by the way, will continue to increase as we go into southern Kentucky over the next little bit. North of Lake Cumberland, getting into Stanford, Lincoln County, Danville, Lancaster, a couple of drops here or there. Mix of sun and clouds, Lexington Metro, with a lot of that stuff off to our south and southwest. We're going to see additional showers and maybe a rumble of thunder developing as we go into later tonight and into the day tomorrow as little disturbances continue to come at us from the northwest. All of this is set. Setting the stage for colder days ahead and a very ugly overall weather pattern that is taking shape not only for the next several days but into much of next week. Guys, looks like spring is going to be taking a little break across the eastern part of the country. Seven day forecast when I come back in just a little bit has temperatures way below normal. Jurors at the Boston Marathon bombing trial are now hearing testimony as they decide if convicted bomber Joe Harsarnaev should live or die. Chris Van Cleve has the latest from Boston. This is Joe Harsarnaev, prosecutor Nadine Pellegrini said as she showed jurors a photo of Sarnaev making a crude gesture to a jailhouse camera. She called him unconcerned. Unrepentant and unchanged as the government began its case to execute the 21 year old. Sarnaev was convicted two weeks ago on all 30 counts for the April 2013 bombings that killed three people and injured more than 260. The defense team decided to delay their opening arguments until after prosecutors have finished their case. Sarnaev's lawyers are hoping to convince the jury the convicted killer deserves a life sentence. They've argued throughout he fell under the influence of his radicalized older brother. But prosecutors say Joe Har was a full partner in the terror attacks. They are calling survivors to the stand, including Celeste Corcoran, who was watching for her sister to finish the marathon when the first blast went off. She told jurors, our whole world just exploded. I just remember hearing blood-curdling screams, seeing blood everywhere, debris falling from the sky. I remember thinking, no, no, I wanted it to be five minutes ago. This can't be reality. Corcoran lost both legs and her daughter was badly injured. The penalty phase is expected to last up to a month. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Boston. The 12 member jury must unanimously decide if Sarnaev gets the death penalty. This sounds like trouble. It is mint julep madness at the Grand Reserve this week. Several area mixologists are gathering to mix up a magic mint julep. And our Deanne Stevens is a judge. She joins us now from the Grand Reserve with more. Hi, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. From the Grand Reserve, it is time for roses and mint juleps. This is what I call a real mint julep cup. Look at the size of that thing. Tomorrow night, they are doing the julep recipe contest put together by Four Roses Bourbon. Danielle Pope is with us from Tops and Lex. Danielle, this is always a fun, fun event. Third year for this and leading into Derby. Yes, ma'am. It's all about Derby, the bourbons flowing, the excitement to party with your friends and Come on out. You guys have, you've narrowed it down to five finalists. Who are they? So we have one from Bella Note, Heirloom, BHG, Solgood, and Table 310. And so they've been working very hard over these last couple of months, um, putting some sort of concoction together for folks to judge tomorrow night, right? Yeah, it's awesome. They have so much creativity, these mixologists that come in and have, they put together their julep, their specialty. The judges, it's pre judged, and the five finalists are here for celebrity judges like yourself to. 
um, judge those. Plus, as you mentioned, we're going to be doing a $5 donation at the door um, that gets the audience the ability to taste test these juleps. Well, it's fun for the people that come in because they get it, and it's a different taste of julep. I remember last year there was blackberries and peaches and All vanilla different. beans. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they're really creative with this. Yes, they are. They go above and beyond. It's a lot of fun. So $5 at the door, that money going to race for education here at Grand Resort. Get your tickets at the door. Just show up. Come right after work. Doors open at 5.30. Judging begins at 6 o'clock tomorrow night here at the Grand Reserve. I'm Deanne Stevens out and about preparing for the julep recipe contest. Back to you guys. All right, Deanne, thank you. A new television series takes a look at what it means to be happy. Terry Okita has your eye on entertainment. Smiles abounded on the red carpet for the premiere of Showtime's new series, Happy-ish. Am I getting fired for not having a Facebook account? Steve Coogan and Bradley Whitford star as ad men at a company taken over by 20 somethings. Coogan's character questions what truly happy is and ponders whether it's easier to settle with being happy ish. I think if you keep looking for this idea of some sort of perfect happiness, you're never going to find it. You just have to accept that life is going to have its ups and downs and uh, just get on with it. I think happy ish is uh, probably as good as it gets. Yeah. Happy-ish premieres Sunday. Stand down. Chris Pratt is a dinosaur whisperer in the upcoming film Jurassic World. A new trailer is out, and audiences are getting a closer look at the genetically modified dinosaur that wants to destroy the theme park. Steven Spielberg is executive producer of the Jurassic Park sequel, which hits theaters June 12. And Willie Nelson says he's going to start selling his own brand of marijuana. The 81-year-old singer-songwriter says he'll sell his cannabis line called Willie's Reserve in Colorado and Washington State, where the drug is legal. That's your Eye on Entertainment, Terry Okita for CBS News, Los Angeles. It's being called the Kylie Jenner Challenge. People are now posting photos and videos of their attempts to copy the duck lip craze. Teenagers apparently are taking to social media after sucking on shot glasses or soda bottles. They're trying to blow up their lips nearly double in size for a just stung by a bee look. Kylie Jenner, who is now is Kim Kardashian's younger sister and famous on Instagram, is known for her pout. Well, who knows what you're going to find when you step outside? A little chilly now, kind of a cool spring. Today, Chris Bailey was a hang on to your hat kind of day for sure. <laughs> yes, it was. I had to use a little extra hairspray. I got to use a lot for my. I'm just kidding. We look outside, though, we do have those gusty winds that are cranking up across the region. Those winds today, at times, 35 to 40 miles per hour. Those temperatures into the low 60s now. Some upper 50s are showing up. Mix of sun and clouds. Farther north you are, the more sun you're seeing. Farther south, more in the way of clouds. And now we're beginning to see some showers starting to break out south of Lexington, back into western Kentucky, where some rumbles of thunder are joining the party. Overall, we're going to see an increase in those spotty showers and storms this evening, really beginning to crank up later tonight and tomorrow, ahead of a bigger push of some chilly air. I'm tracking the frost potential coming up a little later on. Right now, let's check on traffic and track that. Here's Officer Don. Looks like a collision inbound Newtown Pike. Three cars involved with the left lane block that's inbound Newtown Pike in citation. And now a crash on Harrodsburg Road at the circle. But no one is hurt in that crash. And it is uh, right now uh, at the overpass. They've got it over in the center. That's uh, outbound Harrodsburg Road at the circle. Now back to you in the studio. Officer Don, thank you. A taco for the road, what's all the rage on Amazon, and a twisted treat for Tim Tebow. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. Okay, workers at one hotel in Asheville, North Carolina, are so charming that guests end up adopting them. Taco the Chihuahua is working the front desk of this downtown Asheville hotel. He's hoping to meet his future family. Already pet friendly, the Aloft Hotel partnered with a local animal rescue group to help pair pet lovers with pets in need. Grown ups appear to be returning to a childhood favorite activity to relax. Adult coloring books are among Amazon's top 10 sellers, with themes ranging from nature and animals to classic paintings. The titles are being marketed to stressed out adults who want to benefit from the quiet zen that a coloring session can bring. One art therapist who has published several coloring books says coloring can lift the mood, reduce anxiety, and relieve stress. As to why more adults are investing in crayons and coloring books for themselves, it may have something to do with uh, easy online access and the desire to unplug. 
and new, new Philadelphia Eagles quarterback Tim Tebow getting a warm welcome to the state of Pennsylvania. Literally, it's in the form of a twisted treat. The Philly Pretzel Factory has created a new pretzel bearing Tebow's likeness. The Tebow's are selling for a dollar a piece. Folks in Philly say this is a big honor. Well, having a pretzel, I feel like it's like having a statue erected for you in Philly. And a shipment of the pretzels was also sent to the Eagles team. Now, he still has to probably make the team. And Philadelphia fans are traditionally really tough uh, football fans. So, good luck, Tim. That's when you know you've made it big when you're a pretzel. Yes, I'm looking for mine. <laughs> All right, stick with us.